Jonathan Frid was, uh, he was the star, he was the man, he was the show. Uh, he and Laura, in my opinion, a lot of people sell me. Uh, so I sort of looked up to those folks as being pretty consummate in there. I, I had, uh, Jonathan was friendly, he was very professional, and uh, very involved, and I think he was, at the time, I mean, he was, he was hot stuff. People would, people in college were watching that show in high school, they were coming home, they were interested in it, and to this day I still have people that comment about it to this day. So my memories with Jonathan was that he was, uh, he was I know he lived over on the east side, up, not Upper East Side, Mid East Side. Um, I don't recollect a, a great deal of involvement with him, except that he was, I thought he was quite a gentleman. I was a little bit in awe of these people that were working on the show and working so uh, uh, f f fluidly. Um, and that's about all I can tell you about Jonathan. Nothing, nothing personal. Um, it was so campy, uh, and Laura was, I was in awe of Laura. Laura was like doing a play and doing this and raising children, I think, at the time. And, you know, we'd go over to her and she was like <laughs> professional. And I, uh, I have always been a little looser. Uh, <laughs> I sort of lived in the moment. Years later, we met and we really <clears throat> got along well, and we had a, a, a great time with each other. Uh, many years later, and she was the same gal, those great big blue eyes, and uh, I saw her in a different light. Actually, at that time, she was one professional gal. She she had her irons in a lot of different fires. You know, she was very animated and very. Uh, <laughs> I just keep thinking of that scene where we. Where I'm slashing at her with this burning fire, which I remember at the time. And if you look at that scene, it was there was real fire, stuff flying off. It was dangerous. It was weird. Although I was one hell of a good athlete, I handled that thing really well. Um, and that was my memories of her. I went. In, I was in her. We rehearsed. We were rehearsing a Frank a, a play, Frank Badekin's Lulu Earth Spirit. Uh, there's a trilogy of plays. And we attempted, that was later tried again on Broadway, I think. I think it might have been somewhat successful. We did it at the Sheridan Square Theater. And uh, she was doing that. And she had a lot of other things going on. So we rehearsed at her house. I was still trying to remember my lines. The funny thing is I can, I can memorize most anything. I mean, I can pick up a page and just get the gist of something. Um, and so for all of you young people that want to be actors, make sure you don't memorize the words. Just get the ideas down, the words will come, <laughs> the thoughts. <laughs> work is work, and work begets work, and uh, in this case, certainly, that nobody would ever hire me again after Dark Show. No. No, it, it was a real introduction to me, and I was, I'd never been in that environment, and I was, I was, and, and, and after that, I did several others. I, I was somewhat shocked by the whole Man, it's you're moving and you got to be quick on your feet. You got to get going, and you know. And it was uh, it was intimidating to me. Um, and so I learned, actually, towards the end, when I realized I was leaving, I started to relax and do some pretty good work. Uh, so it was a, a definite step. And all the commercials, I probably did a hundred commercials. They all helped. You know, being in front of a camera. And, uh, you know, learning your stuff. And I did Off-Broadway, I did Summer Stock. <clears throat> and I left there, I came back, and I was a, I was a, a, a better actor. But it, it's a slow process. It was a, 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 a wonderful opportunity and a very first opportunity, aside from um, some work I did <clears throat> in New York uh, prior to that time. This was a, this was a big deal for me. And it was a big deal when they dismissed me at the time. So I went back to New York and I was I did, for about a year and I replaced the character on Guiding Light many years later, 93, 94. And my wife and I uh, 
We lived down in the Battery. Right? I would come home and get involved with my own soap opera because, you know, you've got your own script, but you don't read all these. When you've got, like on Guiding Light, we had 15 different characters and storylines going left and right, and you you try to get your sense of where you are, and, and some of it sometimes is related to nothing that other people are doing. I'd come home to watch my shows occasionally. Pretty soon I got caught up in the other characters and what they were doing in my whole life. I would never have imagined that. And I imagine that's what happens to people. They get involved in their lives and their goings on and the amusement and the camp of it. And you like the people you're watching or you don't. And it just, I got totally involved in my own show because I didn't know what was going on in my own show. And we would watch it either at lunch I'd be watching the shows that I'd taped a week or two earlier. So to that extent, I would have to think that uh, uh, I think it has to do with uh, humor, and I think it has to do with getting involved with these characters and relating to them in some level, you know, even though they're over the top. And today, they're so far over the top, it's astounding, although it actually isn't really, because my life is probably... If I put it on tape, it'd be just as big a soap opera as the one that's going on. I think, uh, you know, I mean, you have your favorites. I think this show was so campy. And so the people love that. They, I mean, Dynasty, people loved it. I mean, they just loved it. It was so, they could get behind it and it would be so campy. And, and I could travel anywhere in the country, especially out of this town. P people knew me in New York, by the way. They would see me from that very small stint on Dark Shadows and they would walk up to me in the park and, you know, you know, people treat you differently. That's, I understand that. When I see an actor that's uh, somebody that's significant, I go, wow, I, who knows? I don't know why. You tell me. Why do we do that? It's interesting, I guess. Oh, I, I for years, have received the, uh, the book uh, and the, you know, there's a whole group of people out there that have a fan base and they've kept it alive and it's a culture. Um, I, I just found it amazing. I, people would send me pictures and send me tapes, ask me to sign things. And I didn't get terribly involved with it. Um, I know a lot of people have really kept up with this, you know, that have been on the show that really were involved and go to the... <clears throat> go to the, uh, I think Laura actually said she went back to New York and it really is involved in that. I've never done that. It's interesting, people will, um, people will, will write me uh, or they'll, from Europe or somewhere and they'll say, uh, I've, we've watched your career, it's, it's more marvelous, you've just, but da ba ba da would you say? And they'll give me a list of all the things I've done that I can't remember some of these things. And I'm amazed that they've seen them or watched them. From an episode in, a, in an episodic show, I think probably the big, biggest thing was this thing was fun, campy, and uh, everybody did the. <laughs> when I watch the show, I start to laugh when I watch the clips. I mean, it is a hoot. It is a hoot. Uh, you know, with all these years in between, you 